This week on the Stampede, Hall of Famer and former Mustang Eric Dickerson on his former coach, none other than June Jones. He treats you like a man. I think uh, that's a big part of, I think, why they get the players they're getting now. Players tell us what it's like to take part in a turnaround with the run and shoot master. He's the best coach at what he does. You know, he knows what he needs to do and he knows how to read things that you never see. Centennial time. Homecoming brings the biggest party the boulevard has seen this year. The Mustang faithful celebrate a tradition of excellence and a new era for SMU football. We're very anxious to, to now be able to reap the rewards of a lot of patience. And the Mustangs return home in a big way Good job, defense. to take on the Tulane Green Wave. The SMU Mustangs return to the practice field Monday morning after a tough road loss to the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. We had a lot of opportunities to score, you know what I mean? I'm talking about we were down in the red, you know, we, we were moving the ball. We come out in the second half, get the ball back, go right down the field, and it's 24-7 with our offense, and we can overcome 24, and then we just couldn't get it again. It was a tough loss, obviously, um, but it's kind of it's kind of like a one snap and clear effect that we have to we have to get over. We didn't play SMU football. We didn't go bring the game to them. We kind of just sat back and didn't really play our brand of football that we had played in weeks past. We let two very runnable games get away from us, so we're just trying to basically get everything back on the right track, get our chemistry back flowing, get our spirits high. SMU threw three interceptions in the first half, putting themselves in a hole from which they were not able to recover. The team ended with under 300 yards overall for the first time this year and jeopardized their chance at a conference championship. Everybody goes through this, you know, uh, an ebb and flow of the season, and this is uh, where we have to respond. We have to come back, and, and I know our kids will. They, they've really been uh, working hard in practice, and you see so many guys improving every day. Uh, you know, we're, we're really bound to explode. You know, of course, it's not, it's not how we expected, you know, our season to go. You know, we started off 5-1. and one. You know, we definitely expect, you know, to keep on, keep that winning going. But, you know, we, we, hit, we hit a few bumps on the roads, man. But it's, it's, it's just a little adversity. It's just worrying about us winning each of the rest of these games from here on out. Still, this squad toppled a top 25 team already this year amidst a five-game winning streak. Two tough road losses have been a setback, but Coach Jones quickly made sure his team had perspective and put the loss behind them. I think everybody knows we've had a slump and I think everybody knows what we need to do to get out and uh, we'll be all right. You know, the coaches do a good job of keeping our mindsets positive and that's like the biggest thing, you know, is just trying to stay positive coming off two losses. So I think we're just ready to get back on track. Part of the June Jones philosophy is treating the players like men and letting them grow as men and leaders. This week, the team leaders took it upon themselves to conduct a closed-door meeting to discuss the two back-to-back -back losses. Kelvin Beecham and uh, Chris Banjo called up the meeting because we because we need to figure out what's going what's going on as a team. But we just really just discussed like what can we do better for the team and um, what can we do to get back to what we were doing uh, when we were winning and and whatnot and just not to panic and not to uh, point fingers at each other because. You know, that can destroy a team, so we just, uh, we really, it just helped us come, come together and uh, just be a better team. It's homecoming this week at SMU, and as the campus prepares for the festivities, the players are all business. It's kind of a big deal, uh, but it really doesn't affect much on the field. We just have to, every single game, it doesn't matter if it's homecoming or... You know, whatever it is, we just have to go in there and focus on the win. Like I said, you know, we're one snap and clear. Uh, we're focused on the opponents that we're going to play, and uh, that's really what we're working towards. And, and if, if uh, we have homecoming and everybody's in the bleachers, that's great. Uh, if there's nobody there and it's just us and the opponent, that's okay too. There's some good things, you know, going on that's about to be happening this weekend, man, but we can't worry about that. Uh, yes, the parade, you know, is going on, everything like that. But we worried about one thing, one thing on this two lane, getting the six lane. As the campus fills with players from championship teams past, the players are excited to be a part of a new dawn for the SMU program. You know, for us to be doing what we're doing and for the community to be backing us and, you know, Mustang's still coming around, it's kind of fun to 
kind of fun to hear old war stories. It's just good just to come out there and, uh, you know, perform in front of your fans, you know, so it, it, and your family too. So it's, it's really going to be great. It's a little bit exciting because we have a little bit more going around uh, during campus. I mean, we got a little bit longer of a halftime to, you know, make adjustments and stuff. This week's challenger, conference cellar dweller Tulane, a team who lost their head coach, Bob Toledo, two weeks ago and has not claimed a victory since September. This SMU Mustang team expects to win every game they play. The combination of two tough road losses and a return home to Ford Stadium have the players hungry for Saturday's battle. Tulane's a team that that's not really has the best identity, but you know, they have plays that they can accomplish on and we just have to stick down in our keys and we have to make sure we're doing everything right as a defense and as a team to come off on top on this team. We just got to play our butts off. Everybody's got to do their job. We got to have a lot of energy. You know, we got to energy, energize all the people around us, and we got to execute. So if we do those three things right there, you know, we'll be in great shape. We just got to come out and play our game and put out a win. Your bow is. And we try to put in the same intensity and the same uh, work ethic for everybody, regardless of who they are. Uh, I think we had a good week of practice this week, and we're looking forward to playing Tulane this Saturday. You got to get the W. It's all about it team and we are a team and I mean we can't do anything without 11 guys on the field. Six ninety one lock lock front side level. Ninety switch corner Z page. Successful football programs are the result of a good plan and a head coach that can put those plans into action. Coach June Jones arrived at SMU four years ago to implement his formula for success, and the results have been explosive. McDermott is looking deep down the middle of the field. He's actually going left side. It's Derek Thompson, and he makes a catch in the end zone. Touchdown, SMU! First career TD. This week, we talk to his players and get a sense of what it's like to play under Coach Jones and to see him take the team from the bottom back to the top. He's the best coach at what he does. You know, he knows what he needs to do, and he knows how to read things that you never see, and he knows how to put you in the best possible situation, you know, in the game. Coach Jones is like a father to all the players. You know, he treats you like a man, and uh, whenever you make mistakes, he's going to treat you like a man, and he's going to give you consequences like a man. Fly your ass out there and cut that guy. Lock it, 32 quick draw. Coach Jones' reputation as a leader is well known but his style is about as far from the drill sergeant stereotype that a coach could get. Like he treats you with a bunch of respects and give you all these responsibilities and lets you um, develop and become more of a man, and I really respect him for that. He's gonna tell you when you do something right, but he's not gonna yell at you for doing something wrong. He's gonna critique you and make sure you know actually what you did wrong. You know, he's very even keeled. He doesn't get real high, he doesn't get low, you know, and things, things that go really bad, he, he stays even, and I think our players really feed off of that. And, um, and so he has a, you know, he's been doing it for so long, he's been successful wherever he's been, and, um, and it's showing. I mean, the guys trust him, they play hard for him, and, you know, all of us on the staff, I mean, you know, we can't ask for work for a better guy. Well, I've known June quite a long time. Uh, we coached together at, with the Detroit Lions uh, in the early 90s. And uh, working for June, he's the best. That's why guys uh, that come to work for him uh, don't want to ever leave him. He has a unique ability you know, to bring people together. You know, he's done it in Hawaii, he's done it here at SMU, and uh, he understands what it takes to get a group of guys to come together and play as a family. Go for the throat. When you got a team like this, you got to go for the throat, learn how to kill, all right? Coach Jones' influence reaches all over the NFL and college ranks including to an NFL legend who happens to be an ex-Mustang. Well, first of all, I met June uh, in the National Football League when I played in the league. Uh, he was a coach at the um, Atlanta Falcons, and I went to the Atlanta Falcons for you know a half a year. And June was a well-known coach. I mean, he was a guy that the players liked, the players coach, very enthusiastic, and could break down an offense in all kind of, kind of ways and teach you how to, to use your offensive weapons you have. Um, as a person, great person. I mean, I think that's the main thing about June is just the person that he is. You know, he knows how to talk to you, communicate with you, not the, like some coaches, the typical yelling and screaming and in your face. That's not, that's not him. That's not his, that, he, he knows he can't get the play out of you like that. I really like the kids and, and really 
trying to teach them more than just uh, how to win football games, but how to be men and, and uh, build character in their life that will carry them past uh, this next four years. And as a coach, I mean, say no more. I mean, he took Hawaii's program and turned it around, and he's doing the same thing with SMU's program. I just hope he stays long enough to get us into that BCS Bowl, <laughs> you know, where we can, you know, really be a, a team to be reckoned with. It's no surprise that players are loyal to Jones. He knows what it's like to play college ball, having played as a quarterback. And he never let go of his role as leader of the offense. An early advocate of the run and shoot air attack, he worked himself up through the head coaching ranks, eventually bringing his big time passing game to the NFL with the Falcons and the Chargers. It was there that he got the call to come coach at Hawaii, a place where he played and coached years before. After promptly turning that team into a powerhouse, SMU called. Before, you know, we really couldn't just really sit down and have a conversation with our coach. It was always business. And, uh, you know, with Coach Jones, he came in and, and he really made the game fun again for us, you know, and uh, I think that was the biggest thing. When I was here when we were 1 and 11, and he's preaching the same exact things that he preached those years ago um, of staying together, working together as a team, buying into the program doing your job at the, at the best of your ability and putting the team first. And that's what you see from this team right now is everybody is putting the team first. There are no individuals. Though individuals make certain plays more than others, but there's no individuals on this team. But it's the team aspect that Coach Jones has brought to SMU and it's the team that is winning it. And you see that you know, producing on the field. Okay, it was four deep and the corner came in with the, the, the X. Ran with him? Yeah, yeah, the linebacker ran with Yeah, I thought it was 4 yeah. but the linebacker ran with Yeah, yeah, well, he's going to take the vertical. Yeah. June Jones made an impact almost from the start. Since becoming head coach, the team has been to a bowl game two years in a row and is one win away from being bowl eligible again. Where's that? I just think that June Jones, I said it when he was hired, if June Jones can't bring SMU back to respectability, then it's time to shut it down and start working on that golf team. Uh, and, and I was right about that. He, he's done it. I think June Jones cares a great deal about his kids, and I think his kids realize that he cares a great deal about them. SMU was at a point where everything else hadn't worked as far as making progress. Well, here's this new approach, and he's good at it. Now, can he be good at it at SMU? It's every player's dream in the National Football League to win a Super Bowl. But to watch my university play in a national championship game and win would mean more to me. I would, they had, I would have to set myself aside and take that because that's how proud I am of my university. It's homecoming at SMU. Alumni and fans on the boulevard are pulling out all the stops. There's a special buzz in the air this year as SMU is celebrating its centennial anniversary. We're just real proud of what SMU's done just over the years and really what we're doing now and just watching it grow. It's just been, uh, it's been awesome to be part of it see the next uh, century as, as being another great century of growth for SMU. SMU opened a lot of doors for us, uh, a lot of opportunities here in Dallas and across the, the United States. It's just, it's such a wonderful campus. It's, it's the best. And it doesn't hurt that the Mustangs are five and three and in the hunt for bowl eligibility for the third year in a row. Puts June's a lot. the greatest thing that we've had. Yeah. Absolutely, unequivocally. And he puts yeah. a lot of things in perspective, and he's, besides that, he's a great human being. I mean, if I had a son to play football, I'd want him to play for him. June Jones is a difference maker, and uh, we're just excited to be winning football games to get on the, the hilltop. This very turnaround has the fans buzzing with anticipation for bigger things from this team. We absolutely love June Jones. We followed him in Hawaii. We used to have a little place out there, and I love June. And 
Couldn't have been a better thing for SMU than to bring him here. We really love having him here. He's done a great job in bringing this program back to where it needs to be. These are good times for many alumni, particularly for those who've stuck with the team through thick and thin. It's just unbelievable. I mean, you want to go to games now. Before I went out of loyalty, but now you, you want to go to games. So it's absolutely fantastic. It's been a struggle. You know, we've been uh, around for a long, long time, and we've suffered through it. But uh, but we've got a lot of a lot of heart, a lot of loyalty to SMU. So we're we're very anxious to to now be able to reap the rewards of a lot of patience. Of course, one of the biggest parties on the boulevard is put on by the players' parents, who love watching their kids build a new football legacy for SMU. Well, my kid transferred from Portland, Oregon, Portland State. He played two years of football, came here. And this is just such a special, such a nicer, bigger, neater atmosphere. And the college, you know, the education he's getting compares to none. It, it's really exciting. You know, my brother and I, we played football and never got to this level, you know. And it's exciting to see him out there performing. It really is. Let's go! Let's go! As the homecoming crowd makes their way into Ford Stadium on the SMU campus in Dallas, the football team prepares in the locker room. One, two, three, four. It's been a long three weeks since the Mustangs played at home. The coaches and team know this is the right venue for a rebound. A victory today will not just get the Mustangs back in the win column, it will make the team bowl eligible for the third year in a row. Tulsa gets the ball first, and the SMU defense responds immediately. SMU, and they are able to pick up the blitz now. He's going to be hit. He fumbles a football. It was Thompson who knocked it out, and it's Frazier who has the ball at the 45-yard line of SMU. It is 6'6 senior Taylor Thompson's second sack and fumble recovery in as many weeks, and it gives the ball to an offense hungry for redemption. Strong left Y on 61 Lightning C14. J.J. McDermott and company had failed to put the ball in the end zone for eight quarters and are ready to make amends. Instead of his usual aerial attack, Coach Jones starts today's game on the ground. McDermott out of the shotgun, hands to Zach Line, breaks a tackle 45-40 to the 30, and he goes left at the 25 and hurdles a man down to the 23-yard line, and Zach Line busting off a big one for 29 yards and an SMU first down. And a handoff, Zach Line goes right, cuts back left to the 10, to the 5, and he's going to be knocked down at the Tulane 4. Zach Line carries the ball five times on the seven-play drive and caps it off with his 15th touchdown of the season to give the Ponies a 7 to nothing lead. And J.J.'s going to hand it to Zach. He goes up the middle to the 2, to the 1. He's pulling a lineman with him. He has a touchdown, SMU. I was saying on that lightning, they zone dog the middle guy. Nobody even covered him. The offense quickly gets the ball back. And this time, Tucker. they go to the air. J.J. facing a four-man rush, steps up in the pocket, fires. Here's Derek Thompson again at the 32 on a comeback route. He heads around to his right to the 30, and it stopped at the 29 of Delane. In just six plays, J.J. McDermott leads the team to a third and nine on the Tulane 12. Tulane is showing a blitz. Here they come, and he'll fire quickly. Cross the middle, Thompson at the five. Touchdown, SMU! Go, SMU! The Mustangs start out strong with the offense putting it in the end zone twice in the first quarter and the defense stopping the green wave cold. J.J. McDermott strikes again midway through the second quarter. Left one right, play action. They throw a screen to Darius Johnson. He's got a lot of room in front of him to the 45. Breaks a tackle to the 50, to the 45, to the 40. Kelvin Beecham blocking downfield to the 20, to the 10. Touchdown, SMU! It's Darius Johnson's fifth touchdown of the year. The score puts the Mustangs up 24 to nothing, but they were not finished. A sack by freshman Stefan Sanders helps give the Ponies the ball back. One more touchdown makes the score Mustangs 31, Tulane 0 at the half. Just what the doctor ordered, a solid defensive performance and a prolific offensive attack, featuring two touchdowns on the ground and two in the air. Let's keep the pressure on them, okay? Keep the pressure on them. They're, uh, they're uh, starting to get all upset and all that kind of stuff now. Keep your composure, okay? Keep your composure. Don't drop yourself to their level. 
The third quarter starts with the Mustangs in control, but on the first play. Sliding to the left is McDermott. He'll throw a screen pass to Zach Lyon. He's going to have to turn inside of a defender at the 15. Loses the football. It's picked up by Tulane. It's going to be run back for a touchdown by Robertson. Tulane battles back early in the third quarter, scoring two touchdowns and a field goal. But this Mustang team has come too far to let this one slip away. They need a long scoring drive that will take time off the clock and put momentum back in their hand. Dermott slides right, he throws Cole Beasley, first catch of the day at the 30. He turns to his right to the 35, and he's between the numbers and the hash mark to the 38-yard line, a nine-yard gain. He'll back off, and then he'll come on the blitz up the middle, picked up by Zach Line. a throw left side, caught by Darius Johnson, breaks a tackle at the 40, first down to the 45. J.J. wants to throw. He's looking for the end zone. It's underthrown. No, what a great catch by Darren Thompson coming back to the ball at the 10. He'll have it down at the Tulane 8-yard line. The offense delivers with a classic mix of passes to three different receivers, punctuated by a Zach Line score, his third of the day. The score puts the Mustangs up 38-17, and the game out of reach for Tulane. The victory snaps a two-game skid and moves SMU to 6-3 and three on the year, its best start since 1986. It gives the team bowl eligibility for the third year in a row, an accomplishment only achieved once before in school history. The offensive line opened up the running game for Zach Line. He went over 100 yards again with 143 yards, and the performance put him over 1,000 yards for the season with 1,089. Hey guys, great job, great job. We got bowl eligible today. Now we need to get three more. Uh, that was a good win. Uh, kind of got back on our feet, responded. We've been talking about responding all week after our last two losses. Um, just wanted to get six, get bowl eligible. You know, we got that in our mind. We're gonna keep fighting. Uh, good win, productive today. We needed this one, need to get back on track. Uh, felt like we did a good job offensively. Um, okay. You know, just consistent, kind of took what they gave us and, and, and executed pretty well. It was a good win. Uh, you know, we got bowl eligible today uh, with our sixth win. Uh, we uh, knew we had to come out uh, fast on them in the first half, so uh, we did that and we were able to get the win. I just tried to make it happen. Uh, Coach Mo and uh, all the coaches told me just go out there and play, do your best, so that's what I did. The defense had another standout game with two sacks by Ja'Gara Davis and one each by Taylor Thompson and Stephon Sanders. We just had to bow up. I mean, just you had to dig deep, you know. Fourth quarter, you have to, you know, you got to handle up. And then that's what great defense do. And I feel that we can be great every time we uh, go out there and execute and play hard. After two straight losses, man, I think we really responded uh, versus the 219. They're a good team. Um, I'm happy we got the win. We hung on. We competed the drive where we went down after they got within uh, you know, 14 of us, that was a big drive to go the length of the field and, and get it in the end zone. Uh, and had we not done that, it might have been a game. The team will celebrate this win tonight. But first thing in the morning, their minds will turn to next week's battle against Navy.